Good night. Hey, Tim Hart here. And tonight I thought I'd just talk a little bit about... Well, after cluster B, or if you've been with somebody with BPD, or you have, you are somebody with BPD, or you've been, you know, with a narcissist, or you have a narcissist or borderline parent, or largely that going on in your family of origin, whatever the case may be, as is the case for so many people. After cluster B, or if you have BPD, or whatever the case, finding freedom, finding freedom happens in time, over time, it's its own process, somewhat different for every person. But what is it really all about? It's learning to be with what is. But finding freedom, no matter where you are right now, flows from being with what is in each here and now moment. Sounds corny, but it's so effective. So what is for you right now? Not what you want to change, not what you wish was different, not why did that person do this or why did the other person do that, but what is right now for you? What's your truth right now? What do you need to be with? What do you need to acknowledge? What do you need to be mindful about, radically accepting about what is happening for you in this now, in the be right here, right now. You can bridge the gap between trying to control, trying to figure everything out while you're lost in the fog still, or things hurt, or nothing is going the way that you wish it would, or you thought it was gonna, or you hope it will. But what about just staying with the flow of right now? That's how you bridge the gap initially between control struggles, trying to control, feeling out of control, and finding freedom as you begin or continue to heal by knowing what your truth is in the now. Radically accepting that. It's unfolding as it will. Because you know, what we resist will persist. And so, the task, it's not really a task, but so many people so understandably when a relationship breaks up, or you're not sure, or it's on again, off again, or you have a borderline or narcissist parent, and you've had them forever, or you may still be working on some CPTSD from a long time ago, but that's just the reality of, unfortunately, what so many people go through. Fighting it, trying to control it, being in this painful place, holding your life up on account of it, over-focusing on it. This and millions of other things what people do quite understandably. And everyone does a little bit of all of that or some of that at different times. But what I'm really here to talk about in this live stream is that if you know what your truth is right now, even if it's not what you want it to be or it really hurts, which is really unfortunate, the way to bridge the gap from the control or feeling out of control and the pain and the everything that's going on right now to freedom. You don't have to wait to understand everything. You don't have to wait to figure out everything. You don't have to wait to feel freer, even in the midst of everything that feels the opposite of that. Why? Because when you concentrate on the now with mindfulness and radical acceptance, you can really find more freedom in the now. And you know, that might sound crazy. And people, I mean, people have read this, people have heard this, I know that. But what I'm here to say about that today is, you know, how, you know, people ask, well, how can I live in the moment? You know, like my head is swimming in thoughts. I can't sleep. This is going on. That's going on. I got hoovered. I heard, will I get hoovered? But see, all those questions and all those feelings and all those thoughts and all that focus on someone else, not, you know, and you got to focus on yourself. But even within that, how can you live more in the moment? Because too often, you know, beautiful moments, even in pain, that's the paradox of life, are available, but they're drowned out by a cacophony of self-consciousness, anxiety, doubts, being in a rough place, having had a very painful, uh, you know, just experience, painful experience, still being in pain. But what can you do to sort of hush the buzzing of your mind and really... The most effective way to do that and how to be in the moment is to first concentrate on one thing besides, well, okay, besides the now, besides you need to find peace and you're in flow and what is your truth right now 
You want to focus on being present to the moment. How does one do that? Well, everything's swirling around in your head. Breathe. Focus on your breath. It sounds so simple. It is so, so powerful. Empowering. It's not just a New Age mantra. It's, it's, it's a truism. And remember that you're not your thoughts. That's pretty important, too, because thoughts can be rapid fire. They create feelings. That all swirls around again. Ah, back to this moment with what is. Just breathe. There is freedom in that because rather than thinking you have to be doing all that you might need to think, well, I got to think about this. I got to figure that out. I got to get in touch with, will they get in touch with me? Rather than all that whirlwind swirling around in your head, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, all you really have to focus on one moment at a time is just breathing. And rather than doing all of that activity inside of you, all that worrying, all that feeling, all that thinking, all that wondering, all that questioning, all that focusing on the other person, what can really help is just being you with what is for you right now. And sometimes people meditate to get there. Sometimes people just focus on their breath to get there. It's a resting in stillness. And for a lot of people who are in a lot of pain, the last thing they think they want to do or can do is be still. But there is an incredible empowerment of flow in stillness when everything inside of you is turning around. And maybe there's chaos and drama going on around if you're still in you know contact with somebody who is chaotic and dramatic and troublesome in that regard. And it's really important also to be non-judgmentally aware of the present. There's so many benefits in that. Because when, when we're non-judgmental, we are just with what we feel, what we think, what we know, what is. So it's really important to ask yourself, if you haven't already at times, what is right now for you? What is your truth right now for you? You know, there's a lot of energy to be derived from, yes, relaxation that can be found in being in the now with what is and what is your truth in this now. In each moment, you will be conserving energy and present to self and breathing and finding more relaxation and, yes, more freedom even within, you know, the emotional storms whatever else is going on around you, what is happening for you right now, wherever you are with what's happening for you. And mindful people who are in mindfulness to the moment can hear negative feedback without feeling threatened, can even think things, can feel their feelings, which is really important because a lot of people are dancing away from painful feelings from painful relationships or relationships that are on again, off again. You don't know what's going on. But it's important to be able to just feel your feelings. It's going to help you with the what is of now, a moment at a time as you flow to finding your way to the choices and decisions and the healing, etc., that you will undertake, but one step at a time. Everyone agrees it's important to live in the moment. But the problem is how. That's the, that's the challenge. When people are not in the moment, they're not there to know what they're, wh where they're not there. So much distraction in this world, let alone in pain and in these situations when people have broken up with people, etc., or you're still healing, you know, the cognitive distance, you're still thinking about all those different th aspects of this for people. Such overriding distraction as if there isn't enough of that in the world in general. It's a reflex, really. Reflex to distraction. An awakening to the present moment. To what is and what your truth is right now. Takes intentionally practicing that. Living in the moment involves a profound paradox. You can't pursue it for its benefits. And that's because the expectation of reward launches you into a future-oriented mindset. That would subvert the entire process of being in the now. You just have to trust the rewards will come 
and that you will start to heal and that you will know more and that you will find freedom even within the storm. There are so many paths to this mindfulness, to this being in this moment and being mindful of your breath. And at the core of each and every one of those mindful here and now moments is a paradox. It's paradox on top of paradox, beside paradox, all around paradox, when people are often still reeling in rather binary ways. Letting go of what you want or what you think you need or what you can't figure out is the only way to actually maybe get what you want find what you need, figure out what you need to know. It's just so important to not be chasing things in circles in ways that people sometimes don't even realize they're doing. This can happen to any of us for any reason. It doesn't even have to be for all these painful reasons that so many people are really familiar with. And I like this one quote, you know, in her memoir, Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert wrote about a friend who whenever she saw a beautiful place, she would exclaim in a near panic, it's so beautiful here, I want to come back here someday. And, and Gilbert wrote in her memoir, it takes all of her persuasive powers to try to convince her friend that she's already here, she's already in that oh, beautiful moment I want to get back to someday. It's sort of like the way a lot of us, so many people, nah, I try not to, but yeah, we're all guilty probably, we live our lives, you know, you go somewhere, you see something fantastic, what do you do? You pull out your phone and take a picture of it. We don't even experience the moment of it without having to take a picture of it, which we, which removes us one step back or away from or out of the actual experience. People are always trying so hard or often trying so hard to encapsulate, to capture, to video, to, to take a picture of. And so is it any wonder that our here and now moments are often just not recognized, not realized, not lived through. If you want a future, well, everybody wants a future. Whatever you want your future to be, it really begins by inhabiting the present. Yes, it begins with your next breath. Purposeful. Slow, deep breath in. Blowing out the negativity. Just being with whatever is in this moment, whatever is your truth right now. Flowing, radically accepting. And you know, it isn't easy, especially when it hurts. But the, the paradox of being still with all of it so busy inside is the way to bridge that gap from over control or externalizing control to finding freedom within, within any moment, within any feeling. I know that this is not easy stuff to do, but I have, you know, been working on this myself, and it actually does work. So this mindfulness presence to the moment of the here and now, of what is for you right now, increases not only self-awareness, but self-control. And self-control can lead to that freedom from trying to control other or something that's outside of your control. Because you won't be being thrown around by threats to your self-esteem or you, you know you can observe your pain but you don't have to be whirling around in your pain. Be better able to regulate your behavior but your thoughts, your feelings, the intensity of them. And that's the other irony in all this really is that inhabiting your own mind more fully has a very powerful and empowering effect on your interactions with others. Or when you just maybe then step outside of what I'm talking about to, to then think again for a bit about whatever it is that you really need to think about, whatever is whirling around inside, whatever you're going through. So there's no better way to bring yourself into the present moment than to focus on your breathing because we have to appreciate what our experience is and what is for us in any here and now moment because if we can do that brings in also the attitude of gratitude that if we can do that then we don't have to fight with ourselves we don't have to be judging ourselves like this is a non-judgmental space we create for ourselves mm -hmm.